Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here today to do a March TBR. Now, I don't normally do TBR videos because I like to just go where the bookishness takes me and read whatever I fancy, but this month I've got so many books that I need to get through for for review or for reader thongs. I th thongs? Thongs. When, when, since when were they read thongs? Maybe we'll have a read thong one day. For read thongs, that I thought I'd get the books that I need to read um, on a TBR so that you know what I'm reading this month, definitely. And anything else after that is a bonus. So the first book I am determined to finish in March is one I'm currently reading, and that is The Colour of Red by Nima Lee. This is a collection of sorts short stories that takes place during the great proletarian cultural revolution of 1966, or it began in 1966, um, when basically anarchy ruled in China and they tried to... Um, oh, do you know what? It's just so complicated. It's brilliant. Um, Mao Zedong is in charge, Chairman Mao, and it's about how the children, the young people, basically took over the country and started um, calling themselves the Red Guards, and they started running things and punishing people who weren't in support of Chairman Mao and all that sort of stuff. I'm about, I'm not quite halfway through it. I'm on one of the long stories at the moment, and I'm halfway through that story. It's really interesting. I don't know anything about the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution of, of the 60s and early 70s of China. I know very little about China itself so I'm really really looking forward to learning really more and in fact today at work when I was on a break I actually googled the great proletarian culture revolution just to have a little bit of backstory into what it was about it's a fascinating period in China's history so I'm really enjoying this and I will report back to you soon on what I thought of the whole thing. Secondly, I'm also currently reading another fiction book, and this is called These Dark Wings by John Owen Theobald. This is set during World War II, and it follows the story of Anna Cooper. Her father died when she was a baby, and her mother was killed in the Blitz. And she's gone to live with her uncle Henry, who is the Raven Master of the Great Tower of London. Now, legend has it that if all the Ravens leave the tower, the kingdom will fall. So she is desperately trying to to protect these ravens as they start dying off and disappearing one by one. I'm over halfway through. I'm nearly finished. I've probably finished this tonight or tomorrow actually because I did start it um, on the weekend. It's actually really interesting. It's a really interesting insight to what was going on during World War II from a children, a child's perspective. Well, she's a teenager, she's 13, and the way that children were look, uh, looked at, how they learnt, those that, you know, she was evacuated not from London to the country, but from Maid Vale to the city centre to, to live in the tower, which was one of the safer places. So it's telling her story. Now, the reason I'm reading this is because I need to read the second book in the series. It is a trilogy. And the second book is called What the Raven Brings. And this is book two. And this carries on the story. Her uncle has now passed away, I believe, and she wants to be Raven Master, but she's a girl and she's young, so they won't let her. So I'm really looking forward to see, seeing where Jono and Theobald takes Anna as we continue her journey with the Ravens of the Tower of London. Now, this book was sent to me kindly by Head of Zeus Publishing in exchange for an honest and fair review as part of their What the Raven Brings blog tour. So I will be posting my review of this on my blog on, I think it's the 10th of March, I think I will check and then obviously um, I will post a video review of the both books together at the same time. Whew. Next, I've also been sent some books from uh, Troubadour and I'm still trying to get through them all um, again. The next one they've sent me that I have hauled is Listening for Water and Other Stories by Sandra Wallman. It's only a short story collection. I really want to try and get through this this month. They do a lot of short story collections and I've had quite a few of these. So I really, really want to try and read this one. So basically, um, the the life of a good man blighted by the memories of a single failure. Sunday Strollers witnesses the leap of a girl from the Golden Gate Bridge. A Ugandan in France brings her own way of honouring the death of a neighbour. And a woman discovers the limits of motherly love when tending to a very different kind of, of infant. So they sound like really, really nice stories set across the world, so not in one place. Then I thought, I do like a good thriller, and I've had this one hanging around for a while, and that's Home by Harlan Coburn. I do love Harlan Coburn. Um, basically, the premise of this is for ten, 10 years, two boys have been missing, then you think you've seen one of them. He's a young man, and he's in trouble. So what do you do? Do you approach him? Ask him to go home? Can you be sure it's him? So, although it sounds rather like the premise of The Five, which was a TV series Harlan Coburn did with... 
I want to say either ITV or BBC, I'm not sure, it's been a while. I'm sure it's very different, but I, I do love the Harlan Coben style thrillers, so I'm looking forward to getting into this. So the last three books that I will definitely be reading in March, apart from the one from my TBR jar, which we will be pulling out in a minute, um, are part of two readathons that I will be taking part of in this month. Um, the one is the Stephen King reader lead, readathon or listenathon, which Missy at Binge Read is doing, and March's book, unless she's changed it again, is Gerald's Game. I've never read this one. It sounds fascinating. It follows this a couple, and Gerald and Jesse, and Gerald likes to tie his wife up, and they're in the middle of nowhere, and he handcuffs her to the bed, um, and at one, one day she's had enough of this, so she kicks out of him, and she accidentally kills him. And they're in the middle of nowhere, and she's trapped chained to the bed. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes because Stephen King, can't go wrong, love a bit of King. So that's that one. And of course, March the 12th sees the start of the first ever Terry Pratchett Memorial Readathon, or the re-readathon in honour of Terry Pratchett, with We Ain't Dead on Facebook. So for March, I said I, was, I did say I was going to try and read four books a month, but as it's starting halfway through the month, there will only be two. And I'm starting at the very beginning of the Discworld series with The Colour of Magic and The Light Fantastic, which are two parts of the same story, really. So book one basically sees Rincewind the Wizard meet Two Flower the Tourist, Disc's first story, Tourist, as the... Um, <laughs> travel across the disc falling in and out of various uh, problems. First of all, Two, Two Flower introduces Ank Morpork to the concept of insurance. Not a good idea. So as the city blazes, they run. And on their journeys they meet people like Cohen the Barbarian and Lisa the Dragon Master and so on. And all the time they've got this little thing called the luggage following them around. Sounds cute and sweet, but he's really not. At the end of this book, this book, the end of it, sees great rinse wind falling off the edge of the disc in a spaceship to try and determine the sex of the great Artuin uh, star turtle as people decide this is really important. He is saved because it's not his turn to die because he has a spell from the great book of spells lodged in his head. <laughs> oh, it gets more complicated, don't worry. So. He's been saved by the spell and basically it's got to, he's got to find out what's going on because there's a great big red star in the sky and nobody knows what it is and they prophesize it's going to be the end of the world and only Rincewind can save the disc, which is probably not really the best kind of hero ever because it's Rincewind the wizard. He spells wizard with three Zs. So those are the books I will definitely be reading in March along with Oh, <laughs> I'm throwing them over myself. Um, will be that one. Put it back in. Did another one come out? I think another one came out. I'll find it in a minute. One of these, because the lid came off. So, again, we still haven't had a non-fiction book from this list. And we've got a pink one. We've got a pink one here. I dread these, because I, I, it's going to be something like Rome, or The Brothers Karamazov. Oh no, actually it is a fiction, it's the first fiction book out of the jar people and this is called The Empty Glass and this is by J.J. Baker and this is actually a fictional story about the death of Marilyn Monroe. So as you know I collect, if you don't, where have you been, Marilyn Monroe books. There is a uh, bookshelf tour if you want to view it down below, um, I'll link it down below. This is a fictional book I've had for a while, I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm always in two minds with fictional accounts and real accounts of her death because there are lots of different theories, conspiracy theories and versions, but I'm interested to see what J.J. Baker does with that. So, those are the books I will be reading in March. I won't pick them up, because I will drop them, because they're not really tidy at all, in any way, shape or form. Hang on. And they're all... So, they're, those are the ones I've just talked about. Yeah. And the others, the J.J. Baker one is in the other room on my TBR shelf. So, yeah. What are you reading in March? I will be catching up on your TBR shortly. I hope that you um, have enjoyed this video. Like you always say, if you've read any of the books I mentioned, obviously leave a comment down below. We can have a discussion. Let me know what you think. Like, share, and of course, subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye, booktube.